course, it's important to put uh, ahead a definition uh, about financial technology. It's not necessary to repeat here, but uh, just uh, as a reminder, you know, that by financial technology we mean, uh, you know, uh, innovations in finance that uh, are driven by disrupting technologies, uh, such as big data analytics, blockchain, and artificial intelligence, and others that are, of course, are coming, Internet of Things, uh, and so on. Uh, in the project, we focus on the risks that arise with these uh, technologies. Of course, technologies bring opportunities as well, but uh, you know, our aim is to measure the risk so to make these uh, innovations sustainable. Uh, because by measuring, we aim to you know, provide tools to mitigate and so make them sustainable. The three areas in which we build the project are the three areas that uh, we associated with the three technologies. Of course, the distinction is not clear cut, but uh, it's quite uh, natural to do like that. So big data analytics mostly impacts peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending through the credit scoring part, the credit risk. AI mostly affects uh, robot advisory, asset management, and market risk in that area. The uh, blockchain technology may mostly affects payments, and so you know the risks that arise with payments, for example, cyber risks and fraud risks. Uh, so this is important because it's to emphasize that the project is about measuring risks that arise with technologies, not about technologies and not about uh, business models. This is not what we want to do. Other colleagues. Uh, the world work in these areas. But we are at the edge, say, between the statistics, the, the technology, and the, the finance. So the, our aim, as I said already, is to, you know, taking up the definition that was brought forward by the Financial Stability Board, measure to mitigate and protect the consumers that are you know, the final users of the financial technologies. Uh, our, the, the second motivation of the project, you know, the first is to measure risks to mitigate and make innovation sustainable. The second motivation is to develop you know, a fintech, fintech risk management platform that is as, as uniform as possible across Europe. That's the other point following this uh, quote from uh, you know, uh, Dom, uh, Vice President Dombrovskis that quotes exactly what we want to do. You know, uh, pro provide a project that is, that is cross Europe. And in fact, uh, our partners cover all European countries. Um, third motivation is to join the different actors no? as the uh, Chiara and the rector were saying before, joint efforts. So uh, you know, there is the academia, the, re the, re the regulators, the national regulators and advisors, the national supervisors, and the fintechs. The aim is to uh, bring them together, uh, joining RegTech with SubTech. No? RegTech, you know, is a, uh, the idea is that uh, to, by measuring risk, in a modern way, we use the technologies themselves to improve the compliance on the side of the companies and to improve the supervision on the side of the regulators. So the technology which brings risk, risk is used to improve you know, the regulatory burden and the compliance on the side of the users. That's the idea of connecting RegTech with SubTech. Um, so, this we already said, so the, uh, it summarizes our three motivations into one aim. So, develop a fintech risk management framework that encourages innovations and is uniform as much as possible across the European countries. And brings together the two views of RegTech and SubTech the supervisors and the supervised entities. Okay. Having set the aim, uh, how
how we plan to achieve this goal? Uh, well, through uh, very many activities that we have planned that, uh, you know, uh, are many because the difficulties are high. So, we have essentially four types of uh, events that... Uh, no, about yeah. the difficulties are high. Have you seen the logistics of this workshop? <laughs> Yes. Just joking because I, I am in charge, but we'll, we, there will be so many difficulties and many events. So yeah. be prepared. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, uh, so essentially there are four levels, there are four types of events that uh, are the different levels of the knowledge exchange program that we, we are going to stop. It's not just training, because the idea is that we, if we are not you know, the professors and the other the students, but it's a knowledge exchange with all the four type of actors that I described before. So the idea is that there is a first level of activities that are the workshops like this. We have, we plan three workshops. In these three workshops, we tell the advancement of the project to the international regulators that are our plus the advisors. Like we call all of them advisors together, they listen and they give us feedback and priorities on where we should focus our research depending also on the priorities of the regulators. There will be three of these workshops. Behind the workshops there is research activity that is collected in repository of papers, regulatory reports and white papers from FinTech that will be stored in our portal, we will talk later about the portal, portal will be made accessible to all the stakeholders in the <coughs> universities, the fintechs, the regulators and the supervisors. Um, this is the first level of the activity. The second level of activity, but it's not a, an order of priority, but it's just you know, a logical order, the second type of activity are training <coughs> sessions that are done at the national level. Because in the consortium, as I said before, we have universities that uh, you know, teach their own national supervisor. We cover all the 28 European Union countries plus Switzerland, so 29 countries. In each country there is one university partner that belongs to the consortium that uh, will train knowledge exchange their own supervisor or supervisors that when there is more than one and uh, they will do this using the slides training material that we develop out of the workshops so what we present this morning what we share with you and your comments will be put forward in the lectures that we do with the national regulators of course this will be personalized for example Louis Pavia uh, we as coordinators, we did not take uh, training for Italy, but we are, uh, uh, in any case, experimenting training in Malta. <coughs> so we will be training in, in Malta using our material plus personalization that will depend on what the supervisor will ask us. In Germany it will be a different story, in the Deutsche Bundesbank in another country will be personalization, but the slides are, is a common basis that is compulsory to give to all, to give a common background. Yes, the, the, the main idea is to, to give uniformity in the content that we provide and then also to achieve the different, different the, the huge puzzle that we have among regulators, among backgrounds, so the level is very widespread in Europe of course, in each country is very different and we need, we need to deal also with this. So the personalization bit uh, goes into this aim at dealing with the different level in order to have all them at the end uh, unified. Yes. Yes, yeah. Yeah. That's important. Uh, it will be split, uh, this training will be split in three parts for convenience. You know, that are, as I said before, peer-to-peer -peer lending, where we credit risk, yes, uh, robot advisory, market risk and robot advisory, operational risk in blockchain, but we will go in detail on this later on. 
But the important part is that the lecture is the methodology of the lectures. That's important. The lectures, the training, starts from case studies. So there will be case studies developed on the using data and code that is available to all, so reproducible. With this data and code, we analyze, we measure the risks that arise in peer-to-peer -peer lending, robot <coughs> advisor, and blockchain payments. So that is the third type of, so we mentioned the two, first two types of uh, tra events. The third type is training with code. To make the, the training practical, we will have six coding sessions <coughs> in, Europe, in different places in Europe, unified, where the same slides will be used with code. Our code that will be used by the fintech that participate to the event to reproduce the case studies themselves. So they will learn the fintech practically in direct tech. Last but not least, the whole project will be validated by the European banks that uh, participate in the European Bank Federation and that is that they will validate the activities through the risk management functions of the banks that will be selected to participate. This, in our opinion, is a very important step because we don't see fintech as alternative to the bank system, but we see them as cooperating in an environment that is innovative. Right. This we already said, you know, is the four types of, uh, of, um, of uh, stakeholders of the project. Data will have different channels in the platform. 